Hello again, today we're going to go through Splunk Connect for Syslog. So this is a uh, system designed to make collecting Syslog data into Splunk much easier. Um, it's created by Splunk, it's an open source project. So you can go to Splunk Base and search for it here um, and click on visit site. That essentially takes you through to the GitHub repository here. So here is where you can uh, read through the code and contribute if you'd like to. Uh, the documentation is linked from here into read the docs. So what I've done based on the quick start guide under getting started here, I've essentially made this into a quick script that runs um, and puts the files into a CentOS 8 system, which is what we'll run through today. Uh, but it basically configures everything as you need to um, to set the system up, pulls down the container and so on. This is designed to be run in Docker, uh, but you can build it yourself. The script doesn't do that. It uses the Podman and System C System D settings. Um, the first thing you need to do um, to avoid errors, um, as I've done in, in my Splunk Cloud instance, um, is you need to create some uh, indexes, essentially. So the, the indexes you need to create are listed here. So you need to create this in your environment, whether it's on-prem or in cloud. These are the default locations that uh, the Splunk Connect for Syslog will send the data to um, based on the data you send it. So it's all auto-magical. So if you send it a Ubiquiti event, it knows it's an Ubiquiti event and sends it through to the net index. Um, if you send it a Cisco or um, a DLP index or DNS, it has lots of rules pre-built which you'll see under here in sources. So for each of these source types that are here, it can automatically recognize those for the most part. Um, obviously if you've tuned your events, you might need to make some customizations. But essentially each of these um, source types are pre-built into the collector so you don't need to mess around with Splunk add-ons um, they're already kind of taken care of within the within the container so it's pretty cool so as I said I use this quick start guide here um, these steps are literally what I put into the script makes it a bit easier um, but like I say first thing to do just go into your uh, Splunk indexes here and configure the um, indexes and create them so if you look for net here We'll see I've created the net auth, the net DLP, net DNS and so on. And same for OS. So these are all pre-created. This is just in a, a demo Splunk Cloud instance, but do the same thing where you like um, and just set the retention accordingly to what you'd like to keep. So if we go into uh, Splunk instance at the moment, what we can see here uh, is there's no data in the last 15 minutes from uh, a Splunk Connect for Syslog system. So what we'll do is we will get that to work. So if we switch over now to our SSH session into my CentOS box, this is a fresh installation, uh, literally the installer's just finished running. Uh, so we just need to get the script down uh, from GitLab, this is in the GitLab repo I've used previously. So if we go to our web session, you'll see the other scripts I have here. The one we're going to use today is the Splunk Connect for Syslog. So we can see this here, this gives you the details. Uh, we'll need to tune some settings in this part of the script, obviously, to make it fit our Splunk instance, um, but we're gonna download that here. So if we view the raw, this is a way to easily download the, uh, the contents of the file. So we're just gonna copy this URL. We're going to use wget to get the file down. This is literally the file name. I'll pull that file down. So if we list that, we can see it's now there. We can also cat that file just to show the details. So we do need to make it executable. So with that, you do chmod plus x. And then if we list now, we can see it's executable. Now we do need to change a couple of things in this script. Obviously, I don't know your Splunk instance URL uh, or your, your token. So from here, um, we'll need to edit that file. Uh, so the two, the two tokens are set up here. So the HTTP event collector token and the URL token. Uh, you can see there's a video I have on the HTTP event collector for uh, using Postman which shows you how to create a HTTP uh, endpoint. Um, if you don't, there's um, I'll put a link in the description. 
So now we've got the file down, so we just need to copy our uh, Splunk URL for our test instance. So again, I'm using Splunk Cloud, uh, but this would essentially be the the token that you've got on on your system. Just clear that out. So this is my test instance. I'm going to send the data to, and then the the token at the bottom here that it's going to use. You can spe specify some things here for um, hostname and those kind of things if you've used a container. Um, but that's all essentially you need to set is those two at the top here. So I'm going to save that file. And now we just run that file. So we'll go sudo dot slash. my super secret password. So just check the time zone obviously with any uh, Splunk forwarding it's always good to check the host time is correct. It's shown the uh, environment file which is what uh, Sys Syslog will use to connect so it's showing us that we've configured the correct endpoint, we've configured the correct token and we've turned off a self certificate verification just because it's using a self-signed cert for the testing. Um, obviously it's best if you can to use a uh, official certification, a certif certificate. So the first time, as it says at the bottom, this might take a few, uh, depending on your connection, it's going to pull down the container, um, essentially to run to run Splunk Connect for Syslog. So depending on your internet speed, that's going to vary, but this is only the first time run. Um, the, the container will start every time, essentially, you restart the machine from here. And this is the Podman output, so Podman's logs. There's no errors here, which is good, um, and it's just confirming where it's getting its configuration from. So it should now be running. So if we go back to our web UI and run the same search again just for the last 15 minutes, we can see our machines sent the data up. So here's our test events. That's testing that the indexes exist um, and that it can connect to the HTTP event collector, just checking that the, the system's uh, able to connect. And then it's just telling you that it's uh, Syslog ng is starting up, uh, which is what the collector is in the background, um, and then the version that's running at the moment. So everything's there. The system is connected. Essentially, what you do now is just um, point your Syslog inputs into UDP 514 or TCP 514. You'll see in the documentation which ports are already open. You can customize that if you want to have specific ports for specific inputs. Um, but there are parsers on the way in that will automatically tag and source type the data. Um, using magic. So this is a really good way to quickly set a heavy forwarder up using syslog ng.